Okay guys, today's episode, we're gonna be talking about resale versus new builds. There's a lot to talk about. The big debate, what's better, what's worse. What do you think, Rose? I don't know, I'm a little biased because all the houses we've ever bought are new builds, so. <laughs> We've done a lot of resale. Um, we've also transitioned to mostly new builds, even though we still do resale. Um, we're very well rounded when it comes to both. And what we're seeing, we just want to touch on that and give our opinion. Um, try to give our best unbiased opinion. Yeah. Right? For sure. Um, so, when it comes to resale, I mean, what are the positives that you're seeing with resale right now? Um, well, so with interest rates being high, I guess the positive would be like if you were on the higher end, there's not as much competition because the buying power for majority of people are not there um so you know it's kind of one of those things where everything's already included as well so you have mature trees you have your backyards already done um you don't have to pay melarus if the house is older than 2010 um it the neighborhood's already established so i guess those would be like the top things i would say would be a pro <laughs> for a resale what do you think did i miss anything? no no i mean i'm sure there's plenty of things but yeah uh, one of the biggest things that we're seeing that people if they're more interested in resale is the backyard mm -hmm. um yeah. they don't want to have to put in a backyard and also um the maturity of the trees too. Yeah. Sometimes with the new builds, it's like it looks kind of plain yeah. because the trees are real tiny, right? Yeah. They're just babies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I think you you hit it really good. Um, on the flip side with the new builds, now this is a brand new community. So yeah, the trees are real small and pretty much you get a dirt lot. Yeah. You know, so that's something you need to plan for. They usually give you about a year to put in the backyard. Um, but yeah, that's something you're gonna have to take into account um, when it comes to your budget. Yeah. But here's the cool thing about it. You get to also design your backyard. Yeah. It's your home. You're the very first person into it, into that home. No one else. And you get to design that backyard how you want, right? Yeah. Um, it was actually really fun when we did it. It was a lot of like trials and trying to figure out how we wanted to do it. It's so obviously like we learned as we go. So our next house, we would know a little bit better on how to do it. I think it took us like a couple of years to get it the way we want, but it's the way we want it versus, you know, having to buy a house and changing things up. And it's just harder to kind of vision what you want in your backyard when it's already kind of landscaped. Yeah. So when it comes to, a, I guess, a con with resale, kind of staying on that topic is it's a little bit older, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, the trees are mature, um, but you're buying a used home. Yeah. Right. So when you get in, you're when you um, write an offer on a home, you get into escrow. Your offer gets accepted. You're going to need to do an inspection on that home, and you're going to have about a week's time or so, maybe a little bit more, to inspect the home. And you're going to hire a third party contractor to look at the home, and they're going to go through the home, just make sure it works, right? And they're going to come up with a report of all the little things they have wrong. And then we would go to negotiate to see if the seller's willing to either give a credit, fix it, or not do anything, right? So there's a lot more negotiating when it comes to that side on the resale. Um, and you're gonna find, no matter how old the home is, there's gonna be something wrong. Right. And the older it is, the more Work issues they're gonna have, and that. the inspector might not catch everything. Yeah. Especially, you know, uh, you got your roof inspector too, termite and home well, inspection. So like we sold a house in Rockland, which was um, in our local area, that is, you know, pretty old. Um, beautiful home, great condition, they had inspections done, but as soon as the buyers moved in, immediately they had a flood in the bathtub. Like the same week. <laughs> the same week, and we were like, we did inspections, try to figure out what was going on, but thankfully there was a warranty. Um, a tree, a big tree that was in the front of the house, messed up the pipes underneath the home. And um, so I guess, I don't know if they missed one of the pipes or whatever, but these are things inspections are not gonna find. Right. So these are just some of the risks that you're gonna have with resale homes. Flip side, with new builds, you could still do your third party inspection, but this is a brand new home and they have 
many inspections throughout the whole process of the permits, new build. Yeah. They have to get permits, they have uh, to get signed off by the city with a lot of the things and, and you're getting a, a, a brand new home. And then you're also gonna have a final walkthrough too where you get to go around, look at everything that you see that you want touched up or fixed. Um, the superintendent's gonna walk with you. They're gonna make a list of all the things and they're gonna fix that mm -hmm. and then hand you the keys. But here's the cool thing. If you move in and you miss something or something arises, they're still gonna fix that up to a year. Mm -hmm. And if it's something that they do not, um, it's not on their scope of work, you still have warranties with yeah. the new home, right? Yeah. So, so you're you kind of covered when it comes to new yeah. home and if something goes wrong, you're covered with that. Yeah, so there's a one year fit and finish warranty with all the builders and there's also like a 10 year structural and foundation warranty with new construction homes as well. Um, and then all the appliances are gonna have their own manufactured warranty. So like, let's say the dishwasher breaks within like, you know, three months <clears throat> or something happens, you can contact the manufacturer with that. Um, and this, like maybe the flooring, if it's loose for any reason, yeah. baseboards, the uh, cabinets, the carpets, our carpet yeah. starts to get, it gets loose a couple yeah. times when it's new yeah. and you have that year and they came back and stretched it yeah. for us. Right. Yeah. So it's things like that. Well, and then this is not with all builders, but we have, um, I can't remember what brand it was, but we have our faucets, our lifetime warranty with the manufacturer. So it's not so much the builder, but like the manufacturer that makes our faucets. So yeah, that's now, kinda cool. <laughs> if you go in and you, let's say ch hire an electrician and change some of the wirings in one part of the house, oh, that's yeah. actually gonna void that part of the mm -hmm. house when it comes to the fit and finish. Um, but they'll still consider it the rest of the house. So yeah. any work you're gonna do to the house within that year's time, um, just remember that they don't have to fix anything if there's an issue with it. Oh yeah, right? yeah, so yeah, if you make adjustments. Just like when we were, when we moved into our house, we have a retaining wall on the side, and they said if we change anything on that retaining wall, it could jeopardize the foundation because we're on like the edge, and so that would um, void our foundation warranty if we touch that, so. Just so, I mean, that's a great that. peace of mind to have. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you want to go even further, get your own inspection. And I, we did that with our home. We mm -hmm. got a third-party home inspection, handed it to the superintendent, yep. and it was you a lot of little things, yeah. a lot of little... Well, I mean, if you think about it, like, I mean, especially if your home is bigger, you can't find everything. Like, even to the point where our standalone bathtub wasn't caught correctly, they right. caught that. Right. right. We didn't even think to move the bathtub sure. to check that. Um, so there's just a lot of little things that they'd be able to do. And then they could check all the electrical outlets throughout the house to make sure they're working um, just and make sure everything like appliances and stuff are working as well. So let's go to, I think, probably one of my biggest pet peeves and pros and cons with resale, new build. What is it? Is going to be like interest rates and incentives and multi um multiple offers okay so those with, are like some of the biggest things with, with new builds even when the market's doing good and they're caught up on all their inventory they'll still offer some kind of incentive to use their lender they call it a lender incentive um, when we bought our home in a time where the was market was 5, hot, 000. 2020, I believe, yeah. um, we, they gave us a $5,000 lender incentive, yep. okay? And as the market started to slow down, because interest rates went from you know under three to eight like that, it slowed down a little bit. They caught up on inventory. We started seeing those incentives get higher, yeah. especially on quick moving, ready moving homes. Instead of a 5,000, you might get 15, 15 20, 30, thousand dollars maybe a price adjustment um using that to oh we're gonna pay for your closing cost and lower your interest rate if rates right now are at about seven percent we're gonna give you a 5.99 percent plus pay for your closing cost yeah or every builder is different it could be 5.5 just this week alone we saw one builder that was doing a three two one buy down it's On called top a top of the 5.5 <laughs> yeah um so what they do is they, if the rates are 7% to, as of today, just throwing out a number, they buy that rate to 5.5 .5 
and then they start the 3-2-1 buy down. So their first year is 2.5, second year is 3.5, third year is 4.5, and then it goes to the 5.5 and it's fixed for the remainder of the term. 30 years, yep. That's crazy. That's right. that's like one of the best incentives we see. And so like with resale, it's hard because like the seller wants to net the most, right? And so like we've seen uh, sellers, like if they're sitting on the market, they'll give like 10, you know, 15,000 towards closing it's costs, to but that. it's rare. But what you'll see is kind of a price reduction. Yeah, or they'll do price reductions. Um, but like if the house is hot, one of the craziest thing though is like you when you get multiple offers, what happens to the price? It drives up. So you're, you're competing. You're competing. getting multiple you're offers. You're not going to get your rate buy down and your price is going to go up because you have multiple offers. But with the new construction homes, they're buying down your interest rate Sometimes they've reduced the price, but oftentimes once you reserve a lot, it doesn't matter if someone comes in with a higher offer, they're still going to sell you the house for what you sold it or what you bought it for. So it's not like a bidding thing. Although I know a couple builders who are doing that in like busier um, areas, which I'm not. You know, a fan of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but that's what we love about new construction is you're not competing for higher prices they're not like taking offers as far as like bidding up it's like if anything if they're taking offers it's to get more incentives or you know to make it better for the buyer yeah so what the builders do is they have phases phase releases so let's say they have five models each phase i'm just you know doing nice round numbers if it's five models each phase might be like two homes per model. So let's call it 10 homes per phase. Every home, every builder's a little bit different. Um, typically what we're seeing is every phase release, there's a price increase. Uh, in 2023, we did see um, that kind of um, taper off and sometimes a little bit of a price reduction. Now there is a lot of talks of the bubble's gonna burst, market's gonna crash, interest rates go from 3% to 8%. There's no way this could happen. They shot up to 8%. It slowed down. We got some good incentives, but there's no crash in my yeah, opinion, you know, sure. and it's recovered. And since 2024, even the end of 2023, all we have seen, um, if it's in a good area, decent area, is price increases. In a struggling, struggling area where not too many want people want to move, you might still see some yeah. really good deals, right? But you're still seeing really good incentives. Sure. Um, so each phase release, they're able to raise the price 3,000, 5,000, 10,000. It all depends. Well, one of the builders in our area, which is, you know, in the Sacramento region, um, increased 20,000 at one point just because they were selling so quickly. Correct. So, I mean, it just, again, it depends on area. But here's, builder. here's the thing with that compared to resale is you, they have so many, yeah. you're not competing in driving the price up. Sure. Um, so almost every builder, almost every builder has quick move-ins and ready um, move-in homes. Yeah. Not and every single one, but almost because they're selling so sure. quick. Yeah. That's where you'll see the most increases each phase. But almost every builder, because what they're doing now is they're not holding off on the build process until all the homes are sold. Uh, yeah. They are just continuing to build. They're yeah. building out the whole neighborhood. So they're sitting on some inventory and they're lowering those prices, yeah. the ones that are yeah. done. And we also have some builders who are only releasing homes. So there's going to be builders who release lots and you could pick up your options, your design, your lot, everything like that. Um, but then we have some builders who are actually like building inventory. Um, so we have a community uh, in Roseville There's where a few now. they, it's, yeah, they you know. build the house and they don't release it until about 60, uh, 60 days out. So you don't have as much options where you can change things. Um, and, but that's where the good incentives are. They're one of the builders that buy a bulk of interest rates at five and a half percent, which is huge. And um, so, I mean, I guess another comparison would be like payments. Like what would payments and affordability be for like a 7% versus a 550 or five and a half percent? Well, every percent increases your purchasing power by about 100,000, yeah. right? Yep. So let's say 7%, if you're able to get a 6%, you actually qualify for about 100,000 more or you're 
going to save a lot more money. Yeah. So we had some clients who were pre-approved for five hundred and fifty thousand with uh, regular interest rates, um, and then so we were like, you know, trying to go look at resale homes, and that price point was just really aggressive. So we were seeing like multiple offers, homes going off the market, or you'll see homes that like need a lot of work, so they didn't even want to write on those. And then so we went and took a look at new construction home. And this builder had, I think it was 5.875% interest rates. So they were pre-approved for 550, but because the interest rate was lower, they were able to get pre-approved for a home that was for 617. I'm sure they had more room, but that was what the home was priced at. So they were able to get like a new home in a nice area with, you know, a 5.875% interest rate. Whereas in the resale, your older homes, multiple offers on the ones that show well, 7% interest rate. So it kind of just like makes sense to them to like go for the look better at, deal. Look at both. Um, yeah. You know, we, a lot of times what we'll do is what we're seeing is if we're looking, we're taking clients to look at resale, resale, resale. As soon as they go to new builds, they almost buy immediately. Yeah. Right. Um, but like, for instance, I just want to touch on something this last weekend. I had some clients out and um, we were asking, what is your, one of your biggest wants? And he was saying price. Mm. I said, awesome. And he gave a specific price. I said, but in this case, there's four communities we're gonna be looking at, and some are gonna be a little bit over the price you're um, thinking, but I want you to take into consideration these incentives and these interest rates because you might be able to purchase the a better, nicer home that you would actually prefer for the same price or lower price yeah, because they're true. offering such good interest rates. He's like, Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Let's 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 look at a little bit higher price warn. So it, it gave them more to look at. Yeah. And they ended up getting a killer deal. Yeah. You know? So Yeah, I mean that happens quite that. a bit. Like we had clients who started at six hundred thousand, they just didn't love the home. And then we ended up somehow showing them something that was like six forty, which is a forty thousand dollar difference. And they absolutely loved it. It had everything that they wanted, and guess how much their payments went up? like 40 bucks a month <laughs> and it was like like he said look for something that like checks off most of your boxes and something that you actually feel like home because you don't know how much the payments are going to be you know people are like price driven but if you have such a big dip in interest rates payments are going to be you know a very important factor when making that decision. i got a con for new builds <laughs> what is that construction site <laughs> Especially, Especially if you're in the beginning. If you, well, if you're in the beginning of it, you're going to have um, great alls and they're digging up the road. At like and seven in the morning. Excavators yeah. and people Nails nailing the, these, these uh, framing the homes. I mean, it's a, it's a construction site. Yeah. Um, so if you are, especially in the beginning stages of it, they're going to set it up obviously to where it's separate from mm -hmm. where you're at. But yeah. I mean, we drive around, we see construction all the time. Yeah. You know, so but it's that, not like we have to go through it. Absolutely not. Yeah. But it is, you, that is a con, you know, y you have to realize that it is going to be bailing yeah. out probably for a long time. And we've and had a lot of tires replaced because we not only live in new construction, but we drive through it for our clients. And sometimes we drive through the construction areas and, you know, we've got an hour or two in time. Yeah, for So sure. don't do that, D uh, don't do that. Well. <laughs> um, so with resale, positive is it's done. built out yeah. for the most part. Um, you're gonna have, probably be closer to the freeway, probably be closer to um, a lot of the- Developed shopping areas. Positive things for that city, right? Yeah. You know, so you gotta think about that. On the flip, new builds, the future is going to be more where of it's that at stuff. right yeah. you know so <laughs> like everything started from somewhere <laughs> right the resale was eventually uh, was at one time new build right? right and they just keep pushing out so you might be a little bit further from those yeah. things those yeah. are those are all things and then to also of. like my biggest thing is like the schools <clears throat> newer schools are going to be more innovative more um just different than older schools older schools may have you know great um, teachers and all that stuff, but newer schools, they're going to have like newer technology, um, maybe try different things. Um, so we've, we've seen, 
you know, we've always thought we were going to stay in um, our previous city because the schools are amazing over there, but it's an established city. Um, we were in San Ramon and then we moved out to Rockland where they have brand new schools and they're amazing. It's like they forward have, thinking. Yeah. You know, yeah. They, they have different, they apply different things and they try different things. They're thinking outside of the box. Right. Because let's face it, education has been the same for decades now, but we are not the same. Yeah. You know, when it comes to 2024 yeah. with technology. So what we're seeing with these newer schools, they're just forward thinking. They're trying to keep up with the times. Yeah. That's a big thing, guys, because, man, times are changing sure. so, so fast. If you guys, um, what do you guys think? Do you guys prefer resale, new builds, both? Yeah. And um, when it comes to new builds, realize that you should have a educated realtor that is familiar with new builds. Same with resale, mm -hmm. educated realtor that is able to negotiate on your yeah. behalf when it comes to um, resale too. Um, do your work. And if you guys have any questions, reach out to us. We are in both sectors yeah. pretty much every single day. This is what we do. We'd love to reach out, have you guys reach out and hop on a call. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Bye. See ya.